Come on, hallelujah, anybody. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand to our feet and glorify the hallelujah, name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly, God is worthy of the God. praise. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come hallelujah. on, make a joyful Thank noise unto the Lord. Yeah, Truly, he is worthy of our yeah, praise. God. He's worthy of our hallelujahs. Yes, we hallelujah. thank you. Anybody got a praise on their lips oh, this morning? God. Oh, God. Come oh, on. God. Yeah, Come on, bless the name of Jesus. Yes, That's it. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes. He's Hallelujah, worthy. God. We thank you yes. to the most high God. We glorify you, glorify oh God. Name, we God. give you praise we and we thank you, oh God. Right now, we God. thank you for life, oh we God. Right Hallelujah. Now, God. Anybody Hallelujah, glad this morning? God. Hallelujah. 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 God. Even if we didn't have any yeah, musicians, God. Hallelujah, we, we still will right bless now, you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the fruit of our lips, we'll open up our mouths and we'll give you some glory. Hallelujah. Come on, open Hallelujah. up your mouth. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of oh, Jesus. Name right Hallelujah. Now, He's worthy. Yeah, Hallelujah. God. It's going to be all right, church. Yeah. Come on, tell your neighbor and say, it's going to be all right. Be all Come right. on, tap your neighbor and say, it's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. We thank you, Jesus. Do you never answer? 
Come on, just open up your mouth and just say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because since your breath in our lungs and we pour out our praise. Here we go. You give light. Hallelujah. You give. You are love. Come on, you bring light. Come on, lift your hands and say, you give hope. Come on, just say, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord.
Lift up your praise. Only God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, only God. Come on, say. Only God. Stay right there, Dennis. Come on, just lift your voice. And say only. you God in this sanctuary we thank you for being present in this sanctuary today oh God we thank you for being in our midst oh God and we just ask that you be Lord over this service fill this place with your presence oh God that everyone who crosses the threshold will not leave out of here the same we thank you for your love and kindness we thank you for your peace we thank you for your joy oh God we thank you for your comforting spirit. We thank you for the peace that you give us, oh God. The reassurance that in spite of our circumstances, you are yet God. You will lead us. You will guide us. You will protect us. This place will be, a, be known as a place of prayer, a place of encouragement, a place of healing, oh God a place of comfort. God, we, we, we lift up our first family to you, oh God, and we just ask that you would be mindful of them. Continue to be mindful of them. Continue to watch over them. Continue to comfort them as only you can comfort them, oh God. But, oh God, we know that you know this, but the rest of us are grieving too. We have heavy hearts, but we believe in you. Encourage us even the more, oh God. Reassure us even the more. Watch over us. Protect us. Ignite us, oh God. To carry on the work that you have established for this house of Zion. God, we thank you. God, we lift up those who are not able to be here physically, oh God. Watch over them. Protect them. Comfort them, oh God. Encourage them. Heal their bodies, oh God, but heal their minds as well. Draw them closer to you, oh God. Father, we lift up this service to you, and it is your service. God, have your way, and we will forever give you the praise. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, you can hear me. All right, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, East Friendship. I'm Deacon Leisha Waller, and I am thrilled to participate in the service this morning because we are here to welcome three new members. So, as I call your name, please come forward to receive your certificate. And I'll read the first one. This certifies that Savannah Moore has received all rights. 
and privileges as a member of East Friendship Baptist Church and on this fourth day of February in the year of our Lord, 2024, 4401 Brook Street, Northeast, Washington, D.C. So next, we want to call down um, Stephanie Payton and she has received all rights and privileges as well. Amen. Friendship. Finally, this certifies that Aretha Larby has received all rights and privileges. And so, praise the Lord. want to say we are delighted to have you join this family of believers here at East Friendship and you all have heard the motto that we are a community church making a world of difference and so we just pray we really just pray that you will use your God-given talents abilities your skills not only in service inside of the church but outside of the church in the larger community and I just pray that God will bless you, will keep you and your family and your friends that are also connected to East Friendship. And just God bless you and welcome. Before you um, make your announcements, I have another announcement real quick. And this has to do with Thursday night service as it relates to parking. So the church has been issued several hundred parking permits for Thursday evening uh, for, the reviewing, for the viewing and the reflection service. And so these um, parking permits will be issued out to all of us as we arrive that evening. Um, our deacons in training and probably others will assist with that in giving out the permits. There will be signs that will be hung on uh, Brook Street that indicate that there is reserved parking. So when you arrive, you will be handed a parking permit for your vehicle. And it's particularly, um, it's specifically for the 4400 block of Brook Street. But you have to be mindful that you cannot park in the handicapped spot next to the church. I understand from this morning that owner will call and it's a $500 fine um, in, in, front of, in front of fire hydrants and such. So even though you have the parking permit, just remember you can't just park anywhere. Just be careful. But there will be um, signs posted as being reserved for the service. And um, so upon arrival, you will receive that parking permit. And I will continue with that, um, with that aspect. Just be mindful that the service on Thursday is um, from 4 to 9 p.m. here at East Friendship. Uh, it is not a formal thing. It's, a, it's an informal thing, uh, in, informal setting. Also, on Friday, it is Jericho City of Praise, uh, Bishop People's Drive. Um, one part of it is Arena Drive. Um, all of this can, information can be found on our website, but it also, I think they're getting ready to, to, to post it on the screen. Uh, just be mindful of that. The viewing will be uh, Friday from 10 to 11, and the service will begin at 11 a.m. Let us all be on time, those of us as deacons and ministers. Uh, if you haven't received your assignments or where to meet, we will 
you know, contact you as well. Um, also, I mentioned that we are in the process of grieving. All of us are grieving. This has been a shock to our system, and um, none of us are well, and that's okay. That's, that's normal. If you think you're well, we are hurting. Some of us are still numb. That it's, a, it's a lot of names that we can, we, we can refer to as how we're feeling, and it's normal. Please, let me, I'm telling you, it's normal. That's what I do. We are going to grieve at, uh, have a grieving session as, as a church next Monday night, the 22nd, 7 p.m. Is that okay, Lady Max? Um, but understand that um, it, and it's a, that's going to be an informal setting. You don't have to come dressed in your church finery. You don't have to you know, prop yourself up. It's a time of, of healing that we have to do. As a body, we have to heal. And so we have to come together and learn how to heal together. So this is going to be the first of probably several sessions that we will have. And I think it, it will be beneficial if you talk to the deacons and the ministers. You know, I, I conducted two different ones with them, and they asked me to come back. So we're going to do it as a, as, as a church. Amen. <clears throat> um, 21 days of fasting is coming. 21 days of fasting is coming. Uh, pay attention to the church announcements and the theme and, and everything, um, and, and, and we will see what happens. We need to pray more than ever before we need to pray. So we are asking for 100% participation. If you've never participated before, you need to participate now. That's going to be part of the healing process. And, and, and doing exactly what our, our pastor would want us to do is pray. Come fall before the Lord. Bring us all together. Um, I believe that's, that's all the announcements we have today. So now we will go right into the tithes and offering. It's giving time of time to celebrate and giving back to God a portion of what he has blessed you with. We usually remind you that God said, what God says about tithing in the book of Malachi 3, verses 10 through 12. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. But there are many scriptures where God reminds us of the importance of giving. Proverbs 3 and 9, it says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of your produce. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up in your mind, not regretfully or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance. So that by, all, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work as it is written. He scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgiving to God. We are a Bible-believing and teaching church. Can I say that again? We are a Bible-believing and teaching church. Let's get excited about our offering and expect God to do what he has said he would do and bless us beyond everything he would ever ask, we would ever ask or expect. Test me, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so many blessings that there may not be room enough to store it. Now, these are the ways by which you can give. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or at home, you can point your phone at the QR code on the screen and all the various ways by which you can give will appear. Give, Givelify, Realm, Text, Snail's Mail, 
that is the U.S. Post Office. For those here in the sanctuary, we are going to march. So if you would just stand to your feet and after the prayer, follow the directions of the ushers. Would you stand, please? I'm going to tell you a little story, if I can remember correctly. There was an actor. You know, last summer, the actors and, 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 and writers went on strike in, in uh, California. And there was this one unknown actor who testified about the goodness of God and how he blessed him. During that strike, if you were an unknown actor, you didn't have any money. You were poor. But during that strike, his rent got paid every month. Somebody paid his car off. He said it was because he believed in tithing. He had no income. If, that, if he could do it for him, what can he do for us? Hallelujah. Gracious and merciful Father, we want to first offer a thank you unto you for all that you have done in our midst. We thank you for how you have blessed this corner of Zion. Now, oh God, we thank you for the continued blessings that you will bestow upon the church that we may be able to continue to bless the community, be a living witness in this community. We stand here today with great expectations of the great things that you will do. Bless those, oh God, who desire to give but are unable to give. Bless those who have decided to try you, even like the poor widow in Mark 12 and 41 who gave her last to prove that you, O oh God, are, the tr are true to your word, and we will forever give you the praise. In Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. grateful come on show a sign that you're grateful this morning hallelujah we glorify you come on just open up your mouth right now hallelujah hallelujah god i am grateful for the 
issues that I'm going through. If you're grateful today hallelujah no matter what you're going through you can be grateful no matter what the situation you can be grateful amen hallelujah amen in spite of God is still good hallelujah somebody somebody once said though he slay me yet will I serve him hallelujah I don't know about you, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. So, so thankful, so thankful. You can have your seat. You can have your seat. I know y'all been standing for a minute. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give another hand for our praise team for inviting the spirit of worship and praise in the house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Setting this throne room atmosphere. Feel like we're right before the throne. Amen. Worshiping. Praise God forever. 
we'd like to also welcome our not only our in-place audience, but also our virtual audience. Come on, let's give them a hand clap of praise. Amen. We thank you, thank you so much, so much for, amen, hanging out with us, for visiting with us today. Amen. You could have gone, amen, to view any church. There's so many of them online, but you're here today. And we believe that there is a word from the Lord for you today. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to our worship and word experience. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, it's uh, time is far spent, so we're just going to get on with it. Our theme, our theme, our theme for this year is God first. How many of you are putting God first in your life? Hallelujah. Amen. Last week's sermon. Man, I'm still feasting on that one. Amen. Reverend Maurice Maxwell, he left something behind. He left something behind. Say amen to that. Amen. If you didn't hear it, you need to go back and take a look at that. Go off on Facebook or on, on, on YouTube and, and take a look at that sermon. He left something behind. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, time is far spent, so I'm just going to get right on with the scripture. Now, I know I just asked you to sit down, but all of those who can, all of those who can, please stand for the reading of the word of God. Even those of you in Digisphere want you to stand for the reading of the word of God. It's a little lengthy, but amen, it's worth it. Amen. Got to read the whole thing because I think it's something in it. Scripture is uh, in Luke, the 24th chapter, the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 35. Amen. I'm reading from the King James Version, and it reads thusly. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, this is Jesus talking, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not, now, hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, and which were early at the sepulcher. When they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. This is Jesus talking. He said, ought not Christ have to have suffered these things and to enter in to his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself and they drew nigh unto the village whither they went and he made as though he would have gone further but they constrained him saying abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent and he went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Somebody say amen. 
And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And then they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God. For your goodness, your mercy, and your grace, we pray, God, that this word, God, would touch hearts and minds. God would go to where its purpose. Let the meditation of my heart, and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. Because, God, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Y'all have a seat. I'm going to use uh, for a sermon title, Walking with the Goat. Walking with the Goat. I'm going to use for a subtitle, just so you can remember it a little bit better, Next Man Up. Look at your neighbor and say, Next Man Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The life of Jesus is one to admire from up close and even at a distance. His story has, of course, been chronicled in the Bible. This book has been a bestseller all over the world since bestselling has been recorded in 1522. That's over 500 years. In fact, it's been on the list so long, so many years in a row that they actually took it off. He is constantly the subject of many authors, Christian and non-Christian, who have an endless flow of subjects to write about concerning his life and how it affects your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Books, magazines, comic books, tracks, CDs, cassettes. We can't even begin to count, surmise, or summarize all that has been written or recorded about Jesus. Okay, maybe just a few points. He was a miracle baby born of humble beginnings to Mary and Joseph in a dingy manger in the hood parts of Bethlehem. There were over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament regarding his coming and his life on earth. The rulers of the land during that time knew he was coming and tried to prevent him from getting here. They tried to kill him, y'all. But when God has a plan, old folks say ain't nobody can stop it. More movies, more mini-series, TV shows, and documentaries have been done about his life than any other character in history. Why? Because he is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Say amen, somebody. Jesus lived 33 years on this earth as a man, a human. And yes, as Pastor Max used to say, he was very God, and he was also very man. He began his ministry at the age of 30, and then he handpicked a motley crew of 12 social misfits from every walk of life to tag along with him. He personally recruited, recruited them, taught them, trained them for the journey ahead. Uh, beloved, I stopped by here just to let you know I don't have to worry about the road ahead, and neither do you. As long as you allow Jesus to walk with you, uh, the old song says, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I'm his own. <laughs> and the joy that we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Somebody say amen. It doesn't matter, listen, the road that you're on. Make room for Jesus. Listen, it doesn't matter how long or short the journey is. Make room for Jesus. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Sometimes you just need somebody to talk to. Sometimes you just need someone whose ear you can bend and tell them all about your trouble. Look at your neighbor and say, make room for Jesus. And when you can't find anybody, just tell Jesus. In the midst of your struggles, tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my despair, he kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Just tell Jesus. 
Well, well, well. In our story today, two men, disciples of Jesus, who are not part of the original 12, they're traveling to the village of Emmaus just days after the crucifixion. Jesus, when, when Jesus, the third man, draws near to them. Let me interject that the journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus is seven miles long. Look at your neighbor and say, that's a long trip. It took approximately two hours or a little better. Now, I don't know why they were there, maybe to get away from Jerusalem or to maybe visit a friend or, or to have a meal. Whatever the reason, they said that the day was far spent when they got there. Too late to be doing any more traveling. Time to eat and rest a bit. But after they finished in Demaeus, why did they turn around within the same hour and walk seven miles back to Jerusalem same day? Okay, let's come back to that. Back then, walking, walking was the main mode of transport. And because most folk back then couldn't afford a Cadillac camel. Now, if they can walk, listen, seven miles to make a friendly visit, and many of us don't even want to walk out to the curb to, to empty our trash. Come on now. Okay, I'm going to leave that right there. Back to the story. The Bible said they do not recognize that it's Jesus walking with them. As his identity was intentionally hidden from them while they walked together. And discussed the life and intentional purpose of Jesus of Nazareth. And how that he might still be alive after the tomb was found to be empty. In Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35, during the journey to the village of Emmaus, Jesus patiently interrupts and guides the two disciples from hopelessness to celebration and nourishes their faith to such an extent that they can see his real presence later on in the breaking of bread. Sometimes we have to be reminded that God is still alive. He's still on the throne, and he will always walk with you even in your times of despair. Look at your neighbor and say, he's right there. He's right there. He's right there. <clears throat> okay, so I have four main topics I want to talk about. For anyone who's up for a walk with the goat, the greatest of all time. Here's my four points. Point number one, we need to recognize who he is. Talking about Jesus. Point number two, we need to receive his words. Point number three, we need to remember his deeds. And point number four, we need to replicate his life. There it is. Recognize who he is, receive his words, remember his deeds, and replicate his life. Point number one, recognize who he is. Listen, nobody, nobody walks with strangers. Stranger danger. Okay. At some point, you got to find out who you're walking with. Let me say parenthetically, listen to this. Stop walking with people you have nothing in common with. That ain't of God. Come on, come on, somebody. The scripture even says, can two walk together except they agree? Isn't that what it says? Jesus wanted the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, as well as his other disciples, to realize that he was the Messiah that they had been looking for. But not on their terms, on God's terms. All they had to do was read the scriptures and see all the prophecies he was fulfilling. He even told them of his upcoming death. But they were looking for Jesus to overthrow the seats of power. Beloved, today, even in hard times and sad times, as well as good times, we need to recognize that he's walking right beside you. Amen. Point number two, point number two, receive his words. Jesus had to give these two disciples a history lesson and take them all the way back to what Moses and the prophets had to say about him. In fact, if you look at verse number 27, going back, and he says, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Beloved, if you don't believe me, you should believe what the word says. 
Don't take my word for it. Go ahead and read it for yourself. Come on now. Jesus called them fools, slow of heart. They read the word but wanted the outcome to go their way. Saints of God, before you can hide the word in your heart, you got to read it. You got to read it. You got to read it. But Jesus was the word in human form. All they had to do was listen and receive it. The problem was their sadness and fear kept them from believing that he got up with all power in his hands. Beloved, today you got to read, you got to meditate on and receive his word. Say amen, somebody. Point number three, remember his deeds. Listen, when they arrived at their destination, the two disciples compelled Jesus to come and have a meal with them. Amen. Because the day was far spent. How many of you know that when you're in the presence of God or maybe that good friend or maybe in church and the fellowship is so good that you just don't want to leave? You want more. The Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. How many of you know that's true? Amen. And when he broke bread with them, their eyes were immediately opened and then he vanished. He disappeared. And they remembered how he spoke to them and said, and how their hearts burned while they were walking along with him in the way. Somebody said it was like fire shut up in my bones. So much so that they were tired. Even though the day was far spent, they got back on the road in the same hour and walked seven more miles back to Jerusalem. Why? Because they had heard Jesus and they spoke to him and they had heard the good news that he was alive. So they wanted to share it with the other disciples. The good news was and still is Jesus is alive. And he's going to live, he and you are going to live forever somewhere. Okay, y'all will get that later. But shouldn't they have remembered how his life was full of deeds of kindness, all the miracles he wrought, all the sick folk he healed, and how he raised the dead? Beloved, never forget and always remember what Jesus has done for you, how he sacrificed his life for you. Remember his deeds. Point number four, point number four, rep replicate his life. Jesus lived a sinless life, a life of truth and integrity, and was sold out to the will of the Father. To imitate Jesus' sacrificial selflessness and servant heart means always seeking to serve and love those around you. The sons of Zebedee, James and John, came to Jesus one day to sit on his right and his left hand in glory for places of position and greatness. But Jesus, recognizing their lack of humility and lack of servitude, tells them both, if you want to be great in the kingdom, you got to learn to be a servant of all. Come on. Now, that's why you see to live like Jesus ain't about titles. It ain't about positions. It ain't about the best seat in the house. It's about obedience to God's will and following his example in love and humility. In fact, how many of you know that we've got servant leaders laboring among us that have given much of their time, their tenth, and their talent? Amen? Amen. We need to appreciate them as much as we can. We need to look at your neighbor, as a matter of fact, and tell them, listen, neighbor, I, I sure do appreciate you. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, when a leader's season is up and he is taken away from those he has led for whatever reason it is, it is essential to know that the lessons he taught, the love he has shown, his wisdom, his knowledge, his compassion, his smile, his laughter, his Donald Duck impersonation, his tough love, his, his methods, his philosophy, his one-on-one -on -one talks, his friendship, his integrity, his good advice. And as Reverend Maurice Maxwell has said, these things are all part of the legacy that he leaves behind. Come on now. 
My brothers and sisters, weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Oh, you can stay there in the midnight hour, but joy is coming in the morning. You don't have to stay there for too long because daylight is coming. Hallelujah. It's almost like the football team who has lost their star player. The coach initially may have a look of anguish and concern on his face, but it suddenly occurs to him that the game is still going on. So he has no time to waste. And if he taught and trained his team well, listen, he can get up, he can stand flat-footed with a look of courage and determination on his face and say, next man up. I, I, I taught you well. I know you're ready. Your team needs you. You are the next man up. Coach Jesus is right there whispering in your ear and saying, I prepared you for such a time as this. You are the next man up. Oh, I will take care of Melvin Maxwell. I just gave him the keys to his mansion. But listen, he is passing the baton over to you. You see, I watched him prepare you for this journey. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, you are the next man up. I'm fitting the close. By now, listen, you should know that the word GOAT is an acronym. And we often hear it used regarding sports figures. So, 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 if you're a sports fan in boxing, you might say Muhammad Ali is the GOAT. In basketball, you might say Michael or LeBron is the GOAT. In football, it might be Tom Brady or this new kid, uh, Patrick Mahomes. In tennis, you might say Serena. Whatever your choice is, but when I think of the GOAT, when I think of the greatest of all time, I would have to choose somebody uh, that's out of this world. In fact, if I had to introduce him, I would do it kind of like somebody else I once heard. It might go something like this. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce a man who needs no introduction. His credits are too long to list. He's done the impossible time after time. He hails out of a manger in Bethlehem near the south side of Jerusalem by way of heaven. His mother is still headlining in the Catholic Church. He holds the record for the world's greatest fish fry. He fed 5,000 hungry souls with two fish and five loaves of bread. He can walk on water and he can turn that water into wine. No special effects, no camera tricks. He's that bad. He has a headshot on every van and every bus across the nation. His name is the King of Kings. Some call him the Lord of Lords. He's the ruler of the universe. Some say the Alpha and the Omega. Some say he's the beginning and the end. The bright and morning star. Some say he's the Rose of Sharon. He's the Lily of the Valley. Some say he's the Prince of Peace. He's a doctor in your sick room. He's a lawyer in your courtroom. He's bread when you're hungry. He's water when you're thirsty. So get up on your feet. Get up on your feet and show your love for the greatest of all time. His name is Jesus. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? His name is Jesus. And he's calling on you to be the next man up. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. God, we're so thankful, God, for your word. We ask right now, God, that it hits the target. It hits the target. Amen. Listen, 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 listen. If you've heard this word and something that was said, something may have ministered to your heart, you may not know it, but you may need to be the next man up. 
or you may need to come running down this aisle and give your life to Jesus. Listen, coming to church ain't all about preaching. It's about getting folks saved, delivered, blessed, healed, and set free. How many of you know that? Amen. If you need the Lord Jesus, listen, this is a plea. Don't leave out of here and let the devil tell you you got another chance. You never know. We've had so many deaths this week. Amen. In our congregation that we've been looking at. Amen. You never know when it's your time. And if it is your time, you need to be saved. Amen. Saved from the penalty of sin. Amen. Our ministers are going to start walking this way. Amen. Our ministers are going to start walking this way. If you need prayer for any reason, here's the main reason that you should need prayer. You should need prayer if, in fact, you need to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. How many of you know that? Amen. For all of you here and for all of you in Digisphere, in the virtual community, I have good news. Even though we're born into sin and it is, it's separating you from God. The good news is God sent his son Jesus to die for your sins so that you don't have to stay in that state. But come on down to the front and give your life to Jesus. Amen. Amen. The good news is God's got a plan. And that plan is for you to be saved. Come on down the aisle today. Even you in Digisphere. If you want to accept the Lord as your personal Savior, you can do that. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Come on, somebody. It says in Acts 2 and 38, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. It says in Acts 16 and 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you shall be saved in your house. Come on now. Amen. It says, if you confess your faults, amen, if you open up your mouth and confess the Lord Jesus and believe it in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's a promise. It's a definitive promise. You shall be saved. Amen. I'll tell you what, we just want to make sure. Let's make sure. Everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Right where you are. Right where you are. Just close your eyes. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. I ask you for forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins. And rose from the dead. Come into my heart. Change my life. I want to trust you, God. I want to follow you. I want to make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, if you're here, come on down to the front and tell us what you did so we can partner with you. We can disciple you. We can make sure that, amen. We can make sure that you know that your name has just been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Even you in Digisphere, if you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, amen, you don't have to keep that news to yourself. Get with us on the chat line and tell us all about it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If anyone needs prayer coming up this way, you can. Amen. The ministers are going to be here. We got a spot for you. Amen. You could be the next man up. All you've got to do is accept it. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it Amen. We're going to just leave these folks here at the altar. And we're going to go ahead and give the benediction. All right. Everybody, hold up your right hand. It says, now unto him that is able to present you faultless, before his presence of his glory with exceeding great joy to the only wise God to him be glory power honor and dominion forever and ever somebody say amen 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 listen to you in Digisphere thank you so much for tuning in we appreciate you we love you so much so much so much please 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 come on back and see us again next week tune in 
We are here at 4401 Brook Street in Northeast Washington, D.C. Come on over to East Frontier Baptist Church and attend so we can see you and we can honor you the way the Lord wants us to. God bless you. God bless you.